All right, so welcome to another episode oh, the of the GCB. GCB. Guys, this week's episode is huge around strength and power. We have thanks to you guys on Instagram yeah. who voted for strength over hit training. Yep, yep. Yes. And then we have <laughs> like a strength workout with a very high powered uh, SUV. So it looks like it's going to be a- And strength burgers. And strength burgers <laughs> full of protein. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be interesting today, guys. Look, we've got some cool camera angles coming. We've got some new equipment. You know, we're obviously getting better. We appreciate your feedback. Yep. We always want to start with that. Um, it's super important to us, right? So, you know, hit us up in the comment section below if you have any ideas or suggestions. Trying to make every video better for you guys. Yeah, 100%. So today's workout starts with? Deadlifts. So oh, guys. My favorite. Barbell deadlifts. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to make sure we retract our shoulder blades, okay? So keeping those shoulders back, okay? Um, making sure your shoulders are in line with the bar, okay? You don't want to be too forward over the bar or you don't want to be too far back into a squat. Keep a neutral spine, so a flat back, okay? And you're gonna lift the bar by turning on your lats, by switching lats on. I like to say, snapping the bar to get your lats on, okay? Get your lats on nice and tight. Lift that bar off the ground, hinge your hips forward, okay? And squeeze those glutes at the end. Jesus Christ. Guys, so if you didn't know how to do a deadlift, you know how to do one yeah. now. <laughs> um, so we're doing a chest press on the floor, so a floor press. The idea is that you're grabbing your dumbbells, you're gonna let your arms obviously hit the floor, ground level, and then you're gonna press from there. The idea behind that for me is that I've got really bad shoulders. So because of my limited range of motion, because my arms hit the ground, it just helps me do chest press with uh, less pain. Always thinking shoulders. about Emmanuel. No, sometimes. Always thinking about Sometimes. It. <laughs> I had to I almost fell asleep during that de deadlift explanation, but no, I'm good. I took my fucking coffee. Sorry, I'm just trying to inform the viewers. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so the goblet squat, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a dumbbell Hold it like this in a front rack position, okay? And what we're gonna do is break at the hips and the knees at the same rate. Again, keeping a neutral spine, keeping your chest up and keeping your back nice and flat. Hit it, uh, going too parallel, don't have to go beyond. If you want to, do it. And then coming back up and squeezing those glutes. You won't do it. Mate, I go beyond parallel. Come on, yeah, I know I'm you one do. of those people. Beyond parallel, oh, Okay, 100%. I squat with full depth. Ask the grass, baby. <laughs> full depth. <laughs> this guy. Talk uh, about the pull up. Yeah, whatever, mate. <laughs> So next exercise is pull-ups or chin-ups. Um, I tend to do a neutral grip. If you're lucky enough to have a neutral grip uh, bar, then uh, that's gonna help you again with your shoulders or helps me with my shoulders. So just passing that information around guys. But if you can't do chin-ups, do assisted chin-ups. So grab your bands. Um, you yes. should be able to take some bands with you. These ones right here. Yeah, wrap them, wrap them around the bar and put them under one leg. So one leg is assisting you up. The other leg is free and is there to save your life. Obviously put your foot down if you um, become a little bit And be careful with these, because if a slingshot sits you in the face, it's gonna hurt a lot. <laughs> but yeah, that's it guys, so. So um, it's four rounds, okay? Yep. 10 reps on each exercise, guys. So just clearing that up, and they'll be in the description, so don't worry, okay? Yep. All right, let's do it guys. Let's get it done. Let's do this. How'd you like that, Emmanuel? <laughs> Strength is always good. I love it, guys. Look, I think that you need a hybrid of everything, cardio, weights, all sorts. So yeah, so awesome guys, workout. Thank you so much for responding to that Instagram post that I put up because yeah. it allowed us to actually come up with a program that you guys wanted to see. We're still waiting on people to comment maybe workouts below. Yeah. Um, stuff that we can do. And uh, yeah, so once you guys start doing that, you know, it'll be even more fun. It'll, it'll be, be even more fun. And we'll here. give you a shout out. So don't worry, we'll, Instagram we'll, or whatever you we'll have, give you a yeah. shout out. Um, and hopefully it's not 100 burpees in like one minute or something like that, something stupid. Listen. Please don't. <laughs> Listen, I'm starving. All right, let's go hit the car. Let's go get to this burger joint. Let's get out More of here. More strength. Thank you guys. More strength. Let's do we'll it. See you guys there.
so far away from me just the way i like it um, oh, funny man <laughs> so it's obviously this week guys we have uh two 2014 srts grand cherokee SRT. srt one with an exhaust one without the exhaust upgrade yeah so the silver car has a baller catback system which is an amazing system similar to the one that i have on my chrysler and this is running stock everything so that is the comparison uh we have stock uh, 20 inch wheels with uh, 295 rubber front and back and then what have you got on your side so we got 22s um, 285s yeah, continental continental so these have got the better tires that's got falcons so. now what do you think is a better wheel that one there see this is the thing i could do either or at this point i yeah. didn't realize that the stock tires looked as good as they do uh, stock wheels look as good as the way they look but yeah, I don't cameraman know. Dan's shaking his head, but we don't care what Dan thinks. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so the cameraman Dan doesn't like them. But <laughs> to be fair, I could have either or. But I always believe in upgrading my wheels and tires, so I would obviously have gone uh, that way. Well, let's talk about specs because yep. everyone wants to know specs. Hundred percent. So zero to hundred in five seconds. The manual says four point nine. It's five actually this seconds. car on the interior says four it's, point nine. It's five nine. seconds, guys. Yeah, yeah. Five we're seconds. going. We're going with five. We're going with five. Uh, six point four liter Hemi motor. You've got. 344 kilowatts, 628 Seven. newton meters of torque. Newton meters of torque. And weighs around about 2,300 2. yeah, yeah. kilos, so, so 2.3 ton. 2.3 ton. A bit of a heavy brute. Um, and obviously that's why you need the power to move it. So yep. Yeah. Um, looks, what do you think? Oh, see, the thing is, uh, I'm gonna say this throughout this whole video. This was marketed at the American style of bigger is better, right? Yeah. They love that, bigger is better. It needs to be big and boxy and aggressive and flat front and flat sides and there's not a lot of like aer aerodynamics so i agree the, the shape, I like it. shape yeah. looks good yeah. but then all over and all i still don't like the car yeah, yeah. i'm not surprised so i'm not surprised mate yeah. if this was an amg c63 oh, we would, nah joking, I'm joking. I'm, joking. I'm joking i'm joking i'm joking i'm joking but um, no but i think they're a beautiful car obviously they sell well you see them around enough yeah um, well they're yeah. affordable and that is not you're not wrong there yeah no, you I think they're great. I think they're a um, good car. They look good. Uh, I mean, for the money that they are now, yeah, I think they're a great car. The way they look, anyway. They still don't look dated. It's true. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's hit the back. Let's have a look at these exhausts. Okay. Okay. All right, so back of the car. The booty. The booty. What are your thoughts? You said you like the look of the car. I do, I do like the look. I, I do like the look. Do you um, like the real exhausts? I do, I do like these are real <laughs> fist real exhaust you can fit your fist in those so if you don't know the owner greg has ordered baller attack uh catbacks from the state to put them on but then he had the silver tips uh powder coated in black so this black finish to match the black gloss i, laminate I do like mad. gloss exhaust the black gloss over chrome yeah over a chrome yeah like the amg we did yeah, like the yeah the, it's all blacked it's, out it, yeah. it's subtle it's nice it looks good so I, don't I like forget that. that's such a little touch like yeah. you just grab any exhaust that you with real tips and just get in powder coat oh, okay. i reckon that sounds amazing yeah. well let's have a listen to this um i think baller from the states probably sell one of the best yeah outside of like your amgs and your we went through this we went through this we rank it amgs yes. audis well, I said AMG, Beamer, then Audi. Yours yeah. is AMG, Audi, Beamer, yeah. which is fine. All right, okay. let's start them up. Let's have a listen. That's a nice note. How good Not as that? loud as yours, but... Mine could be a little bit obnoxious sometimes. Again, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, that's the uh, that's the exhaust done. I think it's I think they're amazing. A little bit of an upgrade makes a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we are inside the Jeep SRT. Um, Emmanuel, thoughts? Tell me. Thoughts. Mm. See, it's reminiscent of the Chrysler, isn't it? 
That's very like, similar. Mine's a 2016. It's reminiscent. Yeah. It's um, a couple little upgrades. So material upgrades on the dash. Very, very slight upgrade. Definitely an upgrade, though. Um, I don't like the center console silver section. Prefer my carbon fiber I agree. section. Um, obviously, seat comfort is amazing. The outside leather with the internal like Alcantara. Yeah. I love that. I'd steering wheel is still my favorite steering wheel on the market. Uh, maybe you could have Alcantara around it, but... It's still my favorite steering wheel because it's so thick. I need thick things in my hand. Not like Salvador that likes very thin things in his hand. Um, I worry but, about you sometimes. Hey, bro. <laughs> what? I just, whatever. It's, it's whatever's hey, comfortable. No judgment. Whatever's no judgment. familiar. No ju no it's judgment. what's familiar, man. No judgment. Yeah, I agree. No judgment. I totally agree. All right. I totally agree. So um, I need thick things in my hands. <laughs> because it's very familiar to me and Salvador can Not go with the European thin oh. steering wheels. Well, thick. BMW have the thickest steering wheel out of everyone. Uh, mm, and they got the best steering wheels. Look, see? All right. Yeah. If it's not a BMW, you guys, we're in big trouble. Oh, God, it's not that. Anyways, I do like the rotary dial in the middle. I think that's a... I like that. I like how it's there. And it's... And this is here instead of all being touched. I do like that. Um, the quality... Well, the rotary dial is only for changing um, drive modes. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's I cool. do. It's quick. It's quick. Yeah, you it's don't a have quick, to It's a quick selector. This. So, yeah, there's a, there's a um, quick shift. I'm against the manual with the quality. I think the quality in this is comparison to buying a Gucci handbag from Parkley Markets. And for people that don't know Parkley Markets, it's a knockoff place where you buy knockoff things. So the quality here is very disappointing. That is my opinion. I just think everything is like hard and this here, it's like fake and then your carbon parts fall off. Remember this. Which, which, which I'm saying, this. there is a carbon part that already has fallen off, okay? Remember this. Uh, that we found in the in the tray in the side here. Remember so, this when the BMW comes in with oh all the plastic God. parts. And yeah, yeah. He the BMW, and the Mercs care. and the Audis. Look, I'm just saying that for the same amount of money you buy one of these brand new, you can buy a second hand, okay? Yeah, but you don't GLC buy these 63 new. AMG, BMW X3 yeah. M Sport, okay? Yeah, but you don't buy these Audi SQ7, you know okay? I mean? Well, They're it's... 45 grand second hand <sighs> and they're like amazing. Bro, the digital display is as good as a Nintendo 64. Oh, more like a switch, but you know, whatever. like it's it's pretty woeful to be yeah. honest. Hey, I'm telling you, <laughs> I, 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 the interior gives you everything you need. That's the thing. Look, that's my opinion. That's my opinion about the interior. Manuel's got his, and that's why we have this show because we have mixed opinions. Okay. 100%. Um, but that that's my opinion. But uh, yeah, let's give it a couple of launches. Yeah, let's see what the performance is like. Let's do it. <laughs> To London, if you find time, we can run one. Talk about some things we can undo. We just in the pen, I can find you. Six one on the money, nine two. You just said a word and I run through. Two texts, no reply, that's when I knew. I knew, I knew. Yeah, circumnavigate the globe as the cash grow. My performance review on this car with a small launch. Look guys, when it comes to this car, this is coming from someone who drives a 2018 Range Rover Velar on the daily. Oh god, here we All go. Right? So he when had a go at me that, on the camera comes to before. 20, when it comes to the, 20, the 2018 Range Rover Velar on the daily, you can't, for me, this is 45 grand, the Range Rover Velar, 120k, whatever you want to do, right? So. As far as power, they're very comparable. Like, they are both very, very quick. I believe the Velar is a little bit slower than this. But the thing is, power delivery on these cars is a little bit aggressive. And I would say maybe a little bit too aggressive. So it becomes, it takes away a little bit of the comfort because in my Range Rover Velar, when I launch the Velar, it's so smooth, power delivery is so quick. And it might not be as quick, but it is smoother in the power delivery. Now, the SRT, especially the 2014, it's aggressive and it can be a little bit too aggressive and then that creates a little bit of discomfort. Now, drives like a boat. Corner, exactly. So cornering is, as you would imagine, it's like sway, it's boaty, you know, so I'm not, I'm not surprised by that. Uh, again, I don't think, uh, I haven't driven the 2020 version, but I would say that they would continue to be boaty. 
Yeah, exactly. So I've just gone around that corner, and like I say, it is like sort of it does sway, it does sort of boat around, and that's that's pretty much Look, how. I know you made uh, off camera. You said that you can't compare this to the modern ones. I can agree with you on that. Hundred percent. Okay, but. If you compare the quality and the driving experience of this 2014 model with its competitors at the same year, this is not as good as the same. I haven't driven any of them, so I can't comment. So I have driven yeah. so other I, cars of the same driven, year model. Yeah, I haven't driven any, can't comment. Okay. So, performance, power delivery, I wish was a little bit smoother, but I know it's part of the intent and the appeal of the SRT, right? That technology is, the idea is to have that power, the raw power, unrefined, with aggressive gear shifts and aggressive power delivery. So for me, it's what I expect from an SRT product. And uh, yeah, it's it's good. Um, they do obviously sell a lot of them. Uh, yeah, 45 grand, like Salvador says, po possibly there could be better versions of it, of course. I am yet to drive any, but yeah, that's me. On That's my performance review on, on this car. Now, You go eat a burger. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are we doing that though? Oh, well, no, no. It's a surprise, surprise, guys. surprise. It's a surprise. So just wait for that. We have a special guest judge and everything. So. Yes. And Emmanuel has cheated, like always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think I've cheated, but. <laughs> All right, let's go do it. <laughs> let's go. All right, so I'm going to make my burgers before Emmanuel gets back. So uh, I'm just using whatever he has in his house. So he's got some cold pressed coconut oil. Just going to use that. It doesn't have actual olive oil spray. Uh, I wanted my sriracha mayo, but he's got Nando's Pyrenees. I'm gonna use the glaze. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute the kale with some mushrooms, okay, from Woolies. Uh, I've gone with the risotto melody. It's a combination of awesome mushrooms. I'm gonna saute that with the kale, uh, with the mushrooms, with a bit of garlic and a bit of glaze. Uh, then I'm gonna also bake my plant-based protein chicken something or other alternatives. Uh, they're gonna go into the oven. And then I'm also gonna finish it off with some halloumi cheese. So it's a pretty fancy burger. Add some avocado on these burger buns because Daniel, the cameraman, likes these, so I'm just doing these buns. Uh, so let's get to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first cut up the kale. So easy, chop the ends off, throw those in the bin. Okay, just gonna chop up my kale. Okay. Chop it however you like, doesn't matter. It's gonna saute it anyway, just make sure all the bloody stems are off. No one about it, anybody eating those, they taste like shit. Egg on the bit. Okay, so that's done. Gonna get my garlic, I'm gonna squish it. With garlic guys, the more the better. If you're ethnic, you understand this. Um, so it just tastes better. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out my mushrooms and open these bad boys up. Plastic, yeah, plastic. Kill the environment, yeah. Don't understand what kind of being paper. Yeah, put it in a paper bag or something like that. Um, these bad boys are usually expensive. Thank God they're on sale because they're cheap, uh, which was good. So, I'm going to wash those. Nice and easy. Yeah, pull that out. Cool. So they're washed. Now, we're just going to whack this into that. Okay, so it's got the fake chicken on a pan, which I'm going to stick in here now, which is called an oven. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, grab your pan, spray some coconut on it. Cool, get it nice and greased up. <coughs> Sorry, that's bad. Great for the lungs. All right, um, whack on the pan, cool, burn us on. And what we're also gonna do is we're gonna grab our kale. I'm actually not gonna use too much because I don't want too much of it. I'm chuck it in the pan. I might chuck a bit of olive oil in there because this isn't actually the best olive oil, oil alternative. Grab your mushies, let the kale saute for a little bit. Then chuck in your mushies, okay? Actually, you know what, hell, I'm just gonna chuck it all in. Okay, chucking all that in, it's gonna taste friggin' awesome, Mr. Mushroom. Chuck that in, bang it in, grab your glaze, grab your salt and pepper, cool. I need a spatula, 
This is not my house, it's the manual, so I'm just guessing where everything is. Okay, so I need olive oil. Dan the man, can you give me some olive oil from the kitchen? Pantry, he's grabbing it for me. Legend. All right. Oh, I can't forget the garlic either. All right, so I'm gonna grab some olive oil because coconut oil, frankly, is crap. So I'm just gonna do the good old walk thing and just chuck heaps of olive oil on there. That's it. I'm gonna just try and make sure this all sautés. It's absolutely freaking awesome. All right. What I'm also going to do, guys, is watch this. I'm grab my garlic. I don't have a garlic crusher, unfortunately, because, again, it's not my house, it's a manual's. So I'm going to use a grater. All right? And I'm just going to grate the garlic all over the mushrooms. The bang. Chuck it in there. Remember, more garlic the better. You will have stinky breath, but who cares? Doesn't matter. Ah, scratch myself. Hey man, you want to come in the frame? Chuck your mic on. Where is my mic? I don't know, find your mic. Uh, put a drop on my mic down here. Alright guys, so that is almost done and smells absolutely divine. Uh, thanks to my girlfriend, that's her recipe, so I'm not going to take any credit for that. Uh, the chicken's almost done, I'm just going to flip it over now. Uh, and then Emmanuel's up cooking his burgers, which aren't going to be as good, to be honest. Let me just be frank about that. He thinks they will be, but they actually won't. Um, and I can't find anything in this house. There's no... Ah, here we go. Tongies. Oh, yep, I'm going to have to grab that with a mitt, so I'm just going to wait. So close that, and yes, yeah, so now we'll wait for a manual's time to come up and him cooking his burgers. Oh yeah, that smells good. Oh, burger time with Burger Pinto. That's what they call me, Burger Pinto. So guys, I'm gonna give this one simple. It's an American style cheeseburger. Lettuce, tomato, pickles or gherkins. We've got a vegetarian patty, which our judges are a little bit skeptical of. I think they're the best ones around. Um, hitting it up with a brioche bun, boom, boom, boom. Not everyone can have brioche. I can obviously make it differently, but I prefer it with a brioche bun. Secret burger sauce, so simple with cheese, done. So, so simple, so got that. Got the secret burger sauce, which you're not allowed to look at. Bigger cheese all the way. Brioche bun, everything's from Woolies. So hit those brioche buns. And um, I like to use nutmegs, the buttery nutmegs. I think it tastes better. Got some lettuce. I like these smaller little lettuce ones. Oh, I think they're the best. I think they taste a little bit sweeter. Then we've got some big tomatoes. Chop those bad boys up and the gherkins and pickles are in the fridge. All right, let's get started. Unfortunately, I've got to use Salvatore's disgusting chopping board. Oh, this has just kale on it. Ooh. Oh, kale. No one likes kale, bro. You don't win friends with kale. Let me tell you. You win it with cheese. Cheese is all enough. Don't <laughs> spit on my burgers. You're gonna make them taste worse than yours. Funny <laughs> <laughs> menu. All right. So final touches. If uh, Salvador actually wants to not steal my my tongs. Oh my god. Look at this. Boop. Here, yeah, you can take the whole pack. My burger wants to be healthy as well. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine, man. Yeah, you know, fine. we'll see. We'll see which one's healthy. Oh yeah. Mate, it's American cheese, brother. American cheese. I mean, I don't even know what needs to be said more than that. Sorry. Uh... Yes, I washed my hands. Stop it. Yes, if anyone's asking that, please don't comment. Oh, guys, you wash your hands. You did, Dorian. Relax yourself. 10,000 pounds. You like pickles? Yes, I love pickles. Mm, that's right. 
And the amount of bloody antiseptic stuff I've used on my hands is probably our alcohol, pure alcohol now. <laughs> Alright. So that is done. Alright, we'll use it. Alright, so I'm the judge, so I'm here to try the burgers. Dan the video man. Dan the cameraman. Dan the cameraman. Alright, this is the manual's one, yeah? Daniel's going for manuals first. Ooh. Yeah, if, if it doesn't fall apart. It's a bit dirty. Yeah. What does Dan think of that? It's pretty good. Alright, cool. So put that down. Now try the fancy burger. <laughs> See? All right, all right, wait, wait, wait. Stop, just stop, just stop. Yeah, go. He's gonna rate it. He's gonna rate it. Okay. Three. It's very good. Two. One. What's the decider? I don't know. They're both really good. Okay. It's a tie. I think if I had to go off like personal preference, just based off the burgers I like, yeah. I like simple, messy ones like Emmanuel did. Mm -hmm. So just based off that, I'd probably give it to Emmanuel just because that's like, my preference. That's fair. But like if I didn't Ooh. have a preference in between what hey. burgers I like and what burgers I didn't, I'd tie them because just the flavor of both of them is ridiculously good. Fuck yeah, yeah we tie. And I'll, I'll the, say it's a tie. Yeah, and also I'll say it's a tie. Both of them being vegetarian, like you can't even taste a difference. Like. Oh, yeah. here as well, and he'd agree with me. Like, it's it just tastes like meat, and it's good and healthy. Yeah. So me and Manuel tied. There you go. In first thing ever. I yeah. didn't think I didn't think it would be a tie, but you know, because my burgers are that great. But no, it's done good, man. Yeah, well, look, I have to give the thanks to this because this probably honestly, it's, it tastes so good. It's, you should try it. It's my girlfriend's recipe, so that that is hers. I'm not taking any credit. So guys, remember, it's just a bit of kale, it's a bit of mushrooms. You use your balsamic glaze. Chuck your garlic in there, saute it, boom, and that's how you make that. And that can go with anything, not just burgers. So good. Let's eat. All right, so now, burger review? Dan? Yeah, yeah. The meat eater? Um, so, pretty much, I hated vegetarian food before this. I'd never touched it, always meat. I always told yeah. them, yuck, why do you eat vegetarian food? And then they were like, look, we'll make you burgers, we'll try it out. Yeah. Completely changed my perspective. They were amazing. I couldn't have told the difference between them and me. <laughs> if they hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known. I'm straight serious. Well, we have been trying to tell them. Yeah. yeah. Like every time we go to the burger joints, we're yeah. like, oh, at least try it. Yeah. And and I was like, nah, if you girl. try it, I think the moral is, if you try it, you might be surprised. Oh, you might exactly. be surprised. Definitely be surprised. And if you're not surprised, you're out 10 to 15 bucks. Yeah. Get over it. Exactly. Yeah. Give it yeah. a go. Uh, the, there's so many positives. They're healthier. Not only that, after you finish eating a burger, or at least in my yeah. like experience. Well, you had two, right? Yeah, I had two. Normally, after I finish eating one normal meat burger, mm. I just feel heavy. I feel gross. I feel sick. I ate two vegetarian ones. Feel totally yeah. better. Fantastic. Yeah. And we uh, tied for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we tied. I couldn't tell them apart. Yeah. They were both so delicious. Right, was it? I appreciate it, man. No, thank you thank for you your honest opinion. Thanks, thank you. Thanks for uh, everything. Now to talk about the car. All right, Salvador, so you go first. No, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. So, 2014-15 SRT Grand Cherokee, okay. To me, when I see this car, all I see is like a quintessential big SUV, like for, made for America. So, big stance, aggressive, like flex, like it's always got a big body. You know, there's a launch control button that just gets you from zero to 100, however quick you can get it there. That's all it's designed for, right? Like. Look aggressive, go fast in a straight line. So I think it achieves that. And for the money, you I could easily say the interior for me is always lacking, even in my Chrysler, I always find it lacking. But I, and I'm not gonna compare it to anything else because I know it's just the price of it. So what I'm getting, what I'm paying, I'm kind of expecting that, I'm hoping for more, but that's what I'm gonna get. Um, you know, if I wanted to go off-road, I'm gonna buy a Nissan Patrol or a Hilux, something completely different and jack it up and make all these modifications and then take it off road. Um, but this is like gonna go from the house to the shops, from the house to the kids, to pick up the kids from school, like from the house to the airport with your big luggage space in your back. So for me, ticks all the boxes. I think it's a very good value for money. I wouldn't say it's the best SUV out there, but I'm super, I, I do enjoy what they've done with SRT. Okay. All these prices, yeah. oh, no, prices, jeeps. Well, under the same brand. Yeah, yeah. Now, my opinion. 
Um, so I'm saying I think it is a useless car in terms of, look, it's a good looking car. I'm not gonna say it's not, it looks good. Mm. It sounds good, right? It's got good power. The interior, I do not like. That's my personal preference. I think it's a very, it's lacking in a lot of quality, like a lot of aspects, the quality is not there. Yeah. I think if you wanna buy something that can carry the kids, have heaps of luggage room, why don't you get a shooting brakes or a, a station wagon? Right, there are plenty of station wagons out there that are awesome, that Maybe are fast, sound. that are quick, that have the sound, that have everything like that. I think when you buy a four-wheel drive, you're buying something back of the head knowing that you are going to go off-road, you are going to go you know, no up way. the coast. Mac, no, look, I think it no is way. silly to have that engine in a four-wheel drive yeah. because it just does not make... Mate, launch control on a four-wheel drive, please explain it. Are you going to take that car to the track? Are you? No, you take the every single it's track got track mode. It's got track mode that I come up against, I'm going to try and smoke it. Like, what do you mean? There is a track mode. But I'll lose. Why? Because Miatas are like the fastest car in the Why? world. Why? Oh, you only sound like a dance. No, nah, it's a true story. <laughs> Why track mode? There, there, there are so many things. So I, I'm just going to say it like this very easy and very simple. I get it's useless. I understand. I'm just going to say this. Launch let me, control let me, is useless. Let me, let me just let me say this. But it's let fun. Me, let me say this. Let me finish it like this. If you're going to look for something to take the kids to school in, to drive up the coast, to do everything that you want to do and be fast and sporty, buy a station wagon, a high-performance station wagon. There is no need for that in a four-wheel drive. So because, what are you, to say? Okay, you like it or you don't like don't it? Like I don't it. know. Yeah, okay. Because the center of gravity is as good as an elephant. Uh, I'm telling you, you're missing the idea of the the design, the concept of it. So the idea that it's was designed in America to sit a, a flex, like a big staunch body, like there's a big mass, like you're missing that aspect of it. Like I could be in the most high performance vehicle, but those guys aren't gonna like a smaller high performance vehicle or a wagon. They're gonna want a big fucking four wheel drive. Mm. One day, I think you'll understand. It's just the size. It's not about the... Uh, that, that's, that's my, look, that's why we have this show. 100%. Because of this. Well, hey, tell me, do you agree that Four-wheel drives are useless. Okay, let's put it, let's put it to a vote, okay? We'll put it to a vote. You guys useless. let us know, you guys let us know. No, no. On, on, this, on this matter, you guys let us know, what would you prefer? High-performance station wagon or a high-performance SUV? Oh, okay. Let's go that's, that's good. Let's no, do that. I can agree on let's that. Let's do that and see what people say. Well, thanks for um, tuning into this week's episode of the GCB. Like, subscribe, and guys... Keep shooting us what you like and what you yeah. don't like because then we can adjust episodes according to what you guys like to watch. And next week we've got a massive surprise. Massive surprise. Stay tuned. Catch you.